Also tonight, another major merger is shaking up Buffalo's banking world today. Cleveland-based KeyBank getting ready now to try and unlock the fortunes of homegrown First Niagara, saying that everything will be, the new slogan, better together. Well, this isn't a done deal yet. It has to be approved. But there are many implications, and they are tremendous for the people here in western New York. This bid is a big one, $4.1 billion, if it goes through and is approved by regulators. First Niagara would disappear and Key Corp would catapult itself into the spot of the 13th largest bank in the country, number two here in western New York behind M&T. Seven Eyewitness News knows you have a lot of questions about what all of this is going to mean for a lot of people. For example, what's going to happen to the thousands of people who work for First Niagara here? About two and a half thousand in western New York. How is this going to affect the way you do business with the bank? And what does this, the future hold now for the First Niagara Center downtown? Also, for Larkinville, another very popular place. 7 Eyewitness News has been working ever since this news broke early this morning to get you answers to all of these questions. My co-anchor, Joanna, live tonight along with Jeff Russo and our reporters, Ed Riley, outside First Niagara's headquarters, again in Larkinville here in Buffalo. And Joanna, that Larkinville area, thanks in part to, to, to the bank, has really become a thriving spot here in the city of Buffalo. Where are you right now? We are just outside that facility, the Larkin Building. First Niagara, one of the anchor tenants here at Larkinville. It occupies several floors of this building, and it has grown substantially since it decided to move its headquarters here in 2009 from Lockport, where this bank had its humble beginnings, its roots in Lockport. It was founded there back in the late 1800s. Of course, all of that has changed over the years substantially. Let's take a look at the numbers right now. First Niagara employees some 2,300 workers in the Buffalo, Niagara region, about a third of them. 750 work right here at its headquarters here in Larkinville, most of them administrative jobs. Now, by comparison, Key Corp, which is based in Cleveland, has about 1,000 workers here. It's actually in the process of shrinking its physical presence as it moves its downtown headquarters from Fountain Plaza to the new Delaware North Building at Delaware and Chippewa. And when it does so, Business First says it will go from more than 40,000 square feet at the Fountain Plaza location to just 12,000 square feet at the new Delaware North facility. And as for bank branches, First Niagara has almost 400 spread across four states, including 52 in the Buffalo Niagara region. And many of those branches are very close, just across the street in some cases, from a key bank branch. And so, no doubt, that is going to lead to some branch closures. If this deal goes through, it still needs to be approved. And that's expected to happen sometime around this time next year. So a lot of unknowns for the workers here at First Niagara and the customers right now. And 7 Eyewitness News reporter Ed Riley has been working this story all day, trying to get a feel of how people are reacting to this major announcement in the local banking industry. Well, Joanna, we talked to a lot of customers, and the one thing we found, there is a lot of loyalty to First Niagara Bank. We also heard a lot of good things about Key Bank from customers who deal with them. But tonight, the big question is, what happens next? And that's why we talked to an economics professor to get his thoughts on this bank merger. So it isn't surprising that banks are looking to cut costs, and one of the ways to do that is to consolidate. According to Dr. Fred Floss, chairman of economics for Buffalo State College, the merger is a result of a worldwide recession and low interest rates. So this is really being driven uh, to help stockholders, not the banking public as a whole. The board of directors for both banks approved the $4.1 billion cash and stock agreement. The Federal Reserve and the FDIC have to come in and evaluate this. Key Corp hopes to close the deal next year, but don't be surprised if it takes longer. Sometimes these things take three, five, and even ten years before they happen. When complete, Key Corp expects to be able to serve three million customers and expand operations in Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. But what about Buffalo? They're going to contract the number of branches here so that they can open branches in those other places. I mean, I don't see what the point of it is. A little sad that 
it's going to change. Key Corp Chairman Beth Mooney said the new combined bank will continue to have a long-term commitment to the region by making a $20 million contribution to the First Niagara Foundation. So for things like the Philharmonic and the zoo, you could go to both Key Bank and First Niagara and get money from both of them. Mm -hmm. Now you're only going to be able to get money from the combined entity and it's probably going to be less than what you got from the both of them. Improved efficiency is one of the goals of the merger, but what does that mean for jobs? Considering Key and First Niagara overlap tremendously, I would expect branch closings. I would expect uh, uh, back offices to be shut down, which means there would be job loss. Now, the idea of branch closings has a lot of people very upset, especially in one Buffalo West Side neighborhood where they had the fight to get a First Niagara branch. Now they fear that branch could be in jeopardy. So, Joanna, a lot of folks just keeping a close eye on this situation. And, Ed, if you recall, some First Niagara customers just went through this uh, three years ago when First Niagara bought out HSBC's local branches. So, this is yet another change for them, a new bank and all that yeah. comes with that. And people were telling us, you know, yeah, they got to get new banks cards, new checks, because everything's got new routing numbers, and it's a hassle for everyone. So, I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, it is a process. Ed Riley, thanks so much for that. Now, another big question in all of this. What is going to happen with the first Niagara Center? Will the home of the Buffalo Sabres have a name change again? The arena became the first Niagara Center in 2011 when First Niagara acquired much of H HSBC's retail operations here in western New York. And si Seven Eyewitness News Anchor Jeff Russo has been following that end of the story for us tonight. Yeah, Joanna, the home of the Sabres has certainly seen several name changes in its 19 years of existence. Remember, back even during the planning stages, it was going to be called Crossroads Arena. And if this deal goes through, the now first Niagara Center will likely be renamed once again. It was September 21st, 1996, that the arena originally opened as Marine Midland Arena. Just three years later, in 1999, it was renamed HSBC Arena, and it stayed that way for the next 12 years. Then in 2011, a new era began when Terry Pagula bought the Sabres. That same year, Pagula sold the naming rights to First Niagara Bank in a 15-year deal. We spoke with Jim Fink from Buffalo's Business First about what's next with Key Bank now potentially in the mix. Naming rights become an, are an asset. They're one of the many assets that Key Bank has acquired in this $4.1 billion deal. The current contract runs through 2026. The question becomes, will Key Bank keep the naming rights? Will they, they do have an escape clause? Well, according to a statement from Key Bank to me late this afternoon, they will not use that out clause saying in a statement, Key Bank will honor First Niagara's contract for the duration. When the contract comes up for renewal, we will evaluate it just as we evaluate any of our sponsorship renewals. It's still too premature to say whether the name will change. That deal signed back in 2011 was a 15 year deal. Safe to assume if that deal goes through that the name will change. Key Bank actually has its name on Key Arena in Seattle. That's the former home of Seattle's. NBA team. Can you have the, can't have the same name, yeah. so they'll have to change that We'll, a we'll bit. see as we go along. Coming up at 6, First Niagara, as you mentioned, has played such a big role in Larkinville in this area over here. Not only as a huge tenant, but also as a corporate sponsor of a lot of the free events that go on in Larkin Square and in Larkinville. We'll speak with Leslie Zemsky. That's coming up at 6 Yeah, First Niagara contributing to many community events yep. and charitable organizations in this town, and they are no doubt a little concerned about where this bank is going from here on out. We'll talk about it at 6. All right, Jeff Russo, we'll check back with you later. So we also asked you to send us questions about this possible merger on Twitter and Facebook. And joining us now to answer some of your questions is Edward Hutton. He is an associate yeah. professor in the College of Business at Niagara University. Yeah. Ed, thanks so much for joining Thank you. us today. I appreciate that. You know, on the top of everybody's mind, obviously, is what impact will this have on the economy? Is it uh, safe to assume this is not going to be good news for Buffalo? Uh, well, one of the things is I don't, it, there's going to be a lot of people that it won't be good for. Right? Obviously, they, uh, they had a uh, press conference today, and they said they're looking to cut $400 million of expenses uh, from the Key Corp First Niagara merger. And if you do the math, that means that thousands of jobs could potentially be cut. So that's going to be uh, not good for a lot of people. What about the customers? If you have a loan, uh, a yeah. car loan or mm -hmm. a mortgage with First Niagara, yeah. does that complicate that as well? Well, 
very, what KeyBank wants to do is to keep all the customers, and I think that it's actually going to be easier than people think for them to be able to make that transition because the reason that Key is spending almost $4.1 billion to buy First Niagara is because they want those customer relationships. So I think they're going to go out of their way to keep them. And what does this mean for M&T Bank? now that uh, the second and third largest Western New York banks have combined. Well, M&T Bank has uh, been the dominant bank in Buffalo for decades, and right now they're going to have a very strong number two, so I think they're going to be in a much more competitive situation than they've been lately. All right, Ed Hutton from Niagara University, yeah. thanks so much Thank for joining you. us out here tonight. So, as we said, a lot of questions still need to be answered as this multi-billion dollar merger plays out in the months ahead. Of course, it still needs the approval by regulators and shareholders. So it's not a done deal, but they are saying, Key Corp is saying, they expect to have this wrapped up by this time next year. More coverage on this major announcement coming up tonight on 7 Eyewitness News at 6. We're going to send it back to you in the studio, Keith. All right, good. Thanks, Joanna. We'll check back with you uh, a little bit later.